So good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have three co-chairs who introduce the, the, the awardees tonight. Definitely, uh, the, our children teams did not coordinate together. We gave the water too much time to do the marketing. <laughs> OK, no, that's a joke. But uh, congratulations. OK. Uh, CIM 100 is pleased to honor USC with our leadership award for ad advancing US-China relation. USC is an international leader in the area of US-China relations. Today, university is the home of the USC U.S. China Institute, located in USC Edinburgh School of Communication and Journalism. The institute is positioning itself as the most authoritative resource for scholars, policymakers, government officials, and journalists seeking information on research, trends, and issues related to China and its relationship to the United States. It gave me the great pleasure to introduce Professor C.L. Max Nikia, President of the University of Southern California, who is accepting this award on behalf of USC. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite President Nikia to approach the podium. Thank you so much, Ming and uh, Dominique. It is an honor to accept this award on behalf of the University of Southern California, on behalf of our worldwide Trojan family. This Trojan family includes 3,000 outstanding students from China and Taiwan, and many thousands of distinguished Chinese alums on both sides of the Pacific. It was at the 2011 USC Global Conference last October in Hong Kong that I felt the unique power and energy and inclusiveness of this global family. But there is no pain, there is no trial, no tragedy worse than to see a young member of the family taken away before his or her time. Our USC Trojan family has felt such a loss after the death of two of our students, Ying Wu and Ming Chu. Before they were shot one week ago in a senseless crime off campus, they were known as serious, committed, and bright members of our family. They were second year graduate students in electrical engineering, and they dreamed of the doors of opportunity that their education would open for them. As the only children in their families, they carried on their shoulders, on their shoulders, the dreams of their parents and their families, who made so many sacrifices to make their American journey possible. Ying was a beloved child of Wu Shi Yong and Yi Yein Mei Nan, who live in the Hunan province. And Ming was the beloved child of Chu Wan Zhu and Fei Xiao Hong, who live in the Chilin province. When we contacted the parents of Ming with this unthinkable news, his mother grieved. That was my life. That is why I live. I identify in the depths of my soul with the students and with their parents. My wife, Nikki, and I 
came to America more than three decades ago as graduate students for much the same reason that they did, because we dreamed of a better life through better education. And we have been blessed to be the parents of two USC graduates ourselves. To see these parents robbed so cruelly of these blessings is devastating. Their parents arrived here from China this week to be with us at the memorial service at USC last night. Our worldwide Trojan family grieves with them here and in more than 100 other nations. This ordeal has brought the Trojan family closer together. Ming and Ying are our children. We feel not only sorrow, we feel rage, we feel anger at the shocking injustice of it. We have offered the reward to bring anyone involved in this case to justice. And yet, sorrow or anger will not be the last word here. We can honor our students' memory best by committing ourselves to building a better city and a better world in which our children are safe to grow, to discover, to love, and to reach their fullest potential. As, U as USC, we have established a Ming Chu and Ing Wu Memorial Scholarship Fund so that the dreams of these two might live on forever through opportunities that they open up for others. Death and life indeed have their determined appointments. Riches and honor indeed depend on the mercies of heaven. But we each, we all, have roles to play to bring the best of heaven here today for our families and our communities. And may we do so together. My university is distinctly proud of its long-standing historical commitment to fostering the study and understanding of China. This is part of our DNA. It goes back to more than 132 years ago, before even the founding of the University of Southern California, when USC's chief founder, Judge Robert McClay Whitney broke up a mob of anti-Chinese protesters and riots in LA in the early 1870s. And one evening, at the risk of his own life, he plunged into the crowd, he held his gun high, and fired a single shot. The crowd stepped back, and the future founder and first chairman of USC then escorted a number of Chinese immigrants to safety. I believe it was at that moment, on that evening, that the DNA of USC as a global institution was called into being. In that moment, on that evening, the ethos, the character of the university began to take shape. Character is destiny, and USC would have a global character and a global destiny. Over 100 years ago, USC President George F. Bovard approved the creation of a Department of Oriental Studies at USC. USC would go on to be the home to more international students than any other American university with one of the largest contingents of Chinese students in the nation. In 1978, USC became the first American university to send a delegation to China, led by President Jack Hubbard and the USC Board of Trustees, following the normalization of diplomatic relations between the two nations. Since then, a myriad of USC-China programs, initiatives, and centers have blossomed on our campus. Today, there is our unique USC-US-China Institute 
based in the Annenberg School of Communication and Journalism, along with innovative US-China partnerships involving our schools of medicine and engineering and business and cinematic arts and many others. And we also have the USC American Academy in China, founded by our brilliant architect, Dean Chin Yu Ma, the first Chinese citizen to be named Dean of any American university. And I also serve on the advisory committee for the State Department's 100,000 Strong Initiative. I believe we can be proud of the mutual benefit that results from this effort to connect American students to life in China. Of course, the mission of the Committee of 100 parallels U.S.'s efforts to encourage economic, political, and social progress for the people of China as well as Chinese Americans. I would like to thank Dominic N for his leadership and work on behalf of the Committee of 100. And I would also like to thank USC trustee Ming Xie for co-chairing this conference and whose generosity, vision, and support have been instrumental in moving USC closer to its noble goals. His resilience, drive and intellect serve as a model for his fellow Trojans, and his commitment to the university inspires all of us. In addition, I would like to express my appreciation to Ronnie Chan, who has been a wise and trusted trustee of the university for almost two decades, and to Chairman Fu, the chairman of Sinopec, our newly elected trustee, who has been a great ambassador for our university in China. But I must thank William Wang for also co-chairing this conference, an accomplished graduate of the Viterbi School of Engineering. <laughs> this Trojan's perseverance, humility, and support of scholarships and the USC Asian Pacific Alumni Association is a wellspring of inspiration. And I thank all of you. Our new age of the Pacific promises to rival or eclipse the enlightenment as an age of transformation. And this age will be shaped by institutions such as USC and UCLA, which bridge the vast Pacific Ocean culturally economically and spiritually. It is a high calling and a high privilege. And thank you again for this wonderful award. Thank you.